so this ascension is all about the mother. This ascension is all about our divine mother. So for those of you who have Gaia, you know, Gaia TV kind of online. So maybe you've seen some episodes of uh, ancient civilizations. And I'm always so blown away, you know, when we have people like Matias de Stefano, who have such great memories of Atlantis specifically. And then yesterday I was watching Matias in one of these ancient civilizations, and he was describing the difference between Atlanteans and the Mu people. And so I was like, yes, the Mu people were just so nice. They were so loving, just the way that we remember all of this, you know, the rainbow people, the ones who didn't want to fight, the ones who just wanted peace. And then the Atlanteans were aggressive and, you know, they just wanted to take stuff and so on and so on. So anyway, it's a great, great um, series, the ancient civilizations on Gaia. So, you know, it confirms everything that we here share also is I'm not surprised that Divine Mother would like the Mu people <laughs> and that she was the one who started that beautiful civilization, just all about love, you know. So we bring that love back. And uh, I always say, I don't remember anything from Atlantis except for the last day of it. And I remember not being an Atlantean actually, but being sent to the earth to actually hopefully save the earth but we really didn't succeed then but this time we are succeeding as you know so what is it to be successful in really making sure that the earth can return to love <laughs> it means that first we become love ourselves and that we've you know it's it's an alchemical process within us and here we actually are engaging in this alchemical process when we work specifically with Orin, when we, of course, work with Divine Mother. And that is internal alchemy. That's what all these traditions have been trying to achieve and studying. How do you achieve internal, internal alchemy first? Well, it's the alchemy of quite a lot of things within us. Number one, transmutation of unconsciousness transmutation of any limitation, transmutation of anything that we would call kind of, you know, what today is the human self. It is that which is not the divine self. It is really the one who felt disconnected. It is the one who didn't like something or someone. It is the one who engaged in conflict. It is the one who didn't feel connected all the time to source. It is the one who was not in love. And so we are returning to that one who is in love. Uh, when I first met Divine Mother as a being who came to me, and I've shared this <laughs> so much, but it is the most important teaching of Divine Mother. And that's not an exaggeration. The most important teaching of Divine Mother is to love life. And she actually, as you know, explained this so specifically, the difference between the lives that we live that she doesn't really mean and she means the big life, the life with a capital L. And so, you know, this is what she speaks about. What is that life with a capital L? How do we love that life? Well, we cannot love it from our own unconsciousness. We first need to step into full consciousness. And stepping into full consciousness is, again, you know, it's the full circle, is love. Full consciousness is full on love. That is really the Christ self that we are embodying. And so we all are on the same alchemical journey. How do we become all love? It's not something that we just decide we have to become it. So it's not something that happens in the head. It is a transmutation of our being. Now, as we are multidimensional beings, you know, it seems like the human self is the dominant self, but it is not. Who's really here, the dominant self, is your divine self, is your Christ self. And so it's nice to surrender. Again, surrender is only possible in absolute fearlessness. As long as we fear something on the outside, we are not yet in surrender to our Christ self. Even worry is an expression of fear. You know, <laughs> I grew up kind of with my grandparents and my grandmother. She liked to say all the time, oh, my child, I worry about you. I worry about you. And I really didn't like that. I was like, please don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm going to do really great things. And so the worry is like ingrained in the human vocabulary too. So I was teaching my grandmother not to say things like that to me. 
So I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. That's it. That's the language of the divine self. <laughs> and so let us not worry about anything. Yes, yeah, so let us just let go, trust, <laughs> relax and surrender. Okay, yes, let's do that. And so that is the pathway. It's the most mystical pathway ever. It is the path of surrender to that which is the true self. That is the path. That is the truth. That is the life. I think Uncle Jesus said something like that too. And so he was right. <laughs> <laughs> because the only way is to be on that path of life and again not that life which we call the conditions that came into being here on planet earth that is not our true life it's experiences it's you know um just the other day when i had that experience that everybody is an actor and we just need to be acting love and that was the original idea of Divine Mother. Let's create many who all will express love. How wonderful that is. <laughs> the original idea was so great. So many will be expressing love. So many will be expressing consciousness. So many will be creating. So many will be coming up with these new imaginations of what life can be, how beautiful it can be, how beautiful that music of life can be. So we are returning to that. To be able to do that, of course, we need to understand what life is and what life isn't and how this reality came into being and how there is nothing to fear that is on the outside in this reality. And the only fear we can have, if anything, is of our own unconsciousness because we see what unconsciousness can do. All the pain in the world is created by unconsciousness. So when someone, you know, like in the US, I think we have like shootings every day. You go to a store and people just, you know, shoot at each other. That's not okay. <laughs> let's let's say it how it is. It's not an expression of love. Uh, and so uh, to me, when I look at someone who commits these crimes against humanity, really against love, against the mother, is because they are so deeply in unconsciousness where they feel so separated from love, where they are suffering so much that actually their reality then is to create more suffering. And so we cannot heal this by hating them or pointing at them, but we actually can only heal it by becoming bigger, 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 bigger influence of love in this world and to be the light that shines upon everyone uh, really non-exclusively so at everyone just shine it upon everyone where it falls it falls you know it's like the sun and so that is our destiny to once again understand that divine mother wants to work through everyone equally and it's, it's just about liberation how do we allow her to step in fully Mm -hmm. there are many paths we only can understand you know like I look at my own life how as long as we contain unconsciousness in our own being we will feel disconnected from something and someone and when we are fully 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 in our consciousness there is nothing on the outside that feels separate from us even the biggest shadow in others or our own whatever it is you know like it all just becomes okay i know who i am i am the light of consciousness i am the light of love and that's all you can be and so that's you know what our journey is that is the christ self the christ self is only all love and so it is for all of us to become it and again meditation to me is the key and feeling so transformed by the work that we do with Oren. <clears throat> I'm going to show the slides here, what we're going to do today. Today is going to be so, so, so amazing. So for those of you who are working with these magical energies, so number one, you know, we are connecting to our, this is a nice picture, but I actually wanted to look at this one. So the great central spiritual sun, the center of our universe you know, you can constantly be connected, just like Jesus said, you know, I and my father are one, what he was saying that he constantly felt connected to our divine source. You know, the father is always represented by the sun energy. Mm -hmm. I, I always look at the chat, so I want to see what questions you have. So, you know, if we want to use this biblical language, I and the Father are one, is I and the great central spiritual son are one. And I met, well, it's a strange way to describe it, but I didn't really have time to bring in the image, but um, 
when you meet this level of really consciousness and creation that you come from, you realize that really everyone is equal. Everyone is completely equal with equal opportunities. And it is only up to us then to really open up to it open up to this light and the more you open up to it the more you shine but the more you shine it's not like you compete with someone else and you actually just shine for the sake of shining and it's pretty amazing and then everyone gets the same amount of opportunity and then everyone eventually actually eventually even the ones who are not transmuting eventually everyone opens up to it because you know it's like everyone is a seed and eventually the sunlight calls every seed into blossoming and so that's us and that's this world so you know no matter where people are one day everyone will open up to this because there's no other way source told me specifically not to even worry about anything <laughs> as i was like oh no <laughs> why are some people not opening up and source was like don't worry about it one day you know and so all you can do is to be the best you can be <clears throat> all you can be is the best you can be and so that's it. But without, of course, the spiritual arrogance, which some people are misled by as well, it's all about actually releasing any level of spiritual arrogance, because as long as we have that, and when we think we are better than, then of course, we are always misleading our own selves. Uh, it's very funny. But <clears throat> today we will be working with our divine will with divine self and specifically we are working actually with the big dipper so in these uh, energy sets up, setups you actually are creating real visible pathways so everyone who's clairvoyant will be will be seeing these things within you so when you start consciously connecting to our divine source when you start consciously connecting to the triangle of energy that is above you then which will be the pleiades the light of pleiades and really you know, tap into it with your amazing feeling nature. What energy is coming to you from the Pleiades, for example? What light? What What is this light doing? What is it creating within you? What type of evolution is it causing? What evolution is serious causing in this triangle above you? So every day put this crown of light above you. That is the trinity of Sirius, of the Pleiades, and then, of course, the Great Bear, with which we will be working today specifically with the Big Dipper. So explore it. Explore it. And, you know, <clears throat> the multidimensional reality that we are part of is so big. It might seem too big it is the biggest science fiction it is the cosmic movie with so many stories within it so many dimensions so many beings it's pretty incredible and so it can be that you will actually get to visit these um these places it is possible that you will get to visit you see the big dipper is in the great bear it is in the constellation it's the most known constellation within the great bear but we will be specifically doing this so um yeah this multi-dimensional reality is very exciting and so yes it's possible you will visit Sirius it is possible you already live there too really it is possible you will visit Pleiades and talk to the beings on the Pleiades again you know it's unlimited possibilities what can happen but we always want to stay super grounded in the purpose that we have right here right now without checking out but it's good to know all these things and so what we will do is we will be transforming our life with the divine will. Nothing beats that, really. Divine will is the most powerful energy, as you can imagine, that will be really working through all of us who participate. And we will be stepping onto the stars of the Big Dipper. And so we'll start with the star here far right on the outside. So it's going to be the top star on the right. And we'll be hopping down to the base of the bottom of the Big Dipper again on the right. Then we'll hop across to the left. Then we'll hop to the top again, where, you know, you have like the four stars creating the ladle. And then we will go to the handle of the ladle all the way to the last one on the outside on the left, which will be the seventh one. So we are moving from right to left, if that makes sense. And each star has a different energy 
and we will connect deeply. So for some of you, you are very clairvoyant, some of you are very intuitive, whatever perception you receive, still do use your amazing gift. Yes, each star has a name, but you know, we'll be uh, actually absorbing the energy. We care about the energy, the, the energy of divine will. So the seven qualities of divine will. And so these are going to be then working through you. The transformation that happens through this work is absolutely unbelievable. So when I first started to work with Oren, I started with the books. So it was like in the 90s. And the books are exceptional. And just reading the books where you are guided to do certain visualizations was pretty amazing. And it was transforming the human self. And then I started to do, you know, the cassettes, the tapes that they had. And I was just listening to the tapes. And then one day it just, you know, it was a breakthrough. It was after six months of doing this work. It was like breakthrough. Suddenly the guides were coming through and just, you know, they were guiding the journey. And they said it was so important to learn how to work with the divine will. And so I was living in Frankfurt in Germany. And I thought, what would be the best place to meditate? And I found a church that nobody was going to at all. <laughs> it was like an empty church. And then I would go in my lunch break when I was on the lunch break. And I would just sit in the church and meditate with the divine will. And it was incredible. The opening that you can expect within yourself is just so huge. It is like it will catapult you to your next state of existence. And just, you know, liberation is what we want. We are liberating from the unnecessary stuff and we are just saying yes to our divine self. It's a beautiful process of surrender. And so today and every day now, we will be using this album, which has all the journeys to be one with the divine will. When we are aligned with the divine will, the manifestations also happen instantaneously. It's really, really incredible. And maybe you notice the last maybe few weeks, we are in a really accelerated manifestation energy where you think about something and it happens immediately, the next thing. And also it's because of the work we have done. And so <laughs> it can, you know, I don't know if you are noticing it, but it's the synchronicity is so huge. And it's like the answer is always immediately after you have a question and whatever you want to see, you see. And it's amazing. Little things, big things, whatever it is. So it's time to go big, you know. So I have a funny story, which really made me laugh because it was like synchronicities all day long. So I was driving to the grocery store, a local organic market, <clears throat> community market. And in my head, as I was listening to some Kundalini music, I was just thinking, wow, everything you think about is happening immediately. I have to share this. You know, whatever you want right now is going to be your next thing. So I went to the organic store and I picked up a lot of carrots <laughs> and they have those long green tops. And in my head, I was thinking, I really don't want these long tops because it's going to take too much space in my bag. A lady walks up to me and says, I believe you don't want those tops. I will take them off for you and I'll bring your carrots back. And this has never happened to me before. I know it's a silly story, but I just had to laugh so much because this lady was reading my mind. This never happens that someone walks up to you in a store and says, you know, let me take those tops off. <laughs> it was so, so strange, really. And so uh, it was like instantaneous manifestation. And that, of course, gives you a boost for what else is possible. <laughs> yeah. So... <clears throat> Incredible what's possible. And so we want to be in that higher mind now. Imagination is what Divine Mother now speaks about. She talked to me all night. I came out of body last night. The conditions were perfect, you know, so we got to travel a little bit. And when you come out of body, you want to have big intentions. And Divine Mother was explaining, just talk every day now about imagination and about visualization. The two create your reality. The reality on the outside might not be pretty, but we can have the pretty within us. So what it is that is pretty within us, what it is that we want to really be focusing on to create, because it's going to be fast. And so she said, speak about the new earth, really. Speak about the new earth all the time. Yogananda, you know, he was using a lot of biblical language. And so he said, when your mind doesn't have anything better to think about than, you know, the human thoughts, then switch gear 
and just think God, God, God. And again, he was using that language. So whatever it is you want to be thinking about, like place those thoughts in that mind, really transmute the imperfect mind into a perfect vehicle of divine will. The divine will only thinks about the divine. You know, there is no room for anything else. How could that be room for anything else? So the way that I think about it is that, you know, we are beings who could not exist without source, the divine source. We could not be without divine source. There's no way <laughs> we would cease to exist. We would be unplugged immediately. So the only reason why we are in existence, whether it is in this lifetime, this dimension, any other dimension, we all are nourished and sustained by divine source. We are nothing without it. And yet so many people go all day long and maybe even lifetimes without thinking about the divine source. And so if we can connect to divine source first thing in the morning and then stay connected all day long. And for some people, it is divine mother. For some people, you know, it is uh, more the father energy of source. So putting beautiful like reminders around yourself, you know, maybe putting, I found this amazing thing in the Tibetan monastery, like, <laughs> and I got to buy it, which is amazing. So the green Tara, you know, put something around yourself that always reminds you of who you are and what you're doing here and how connected you are with this amazing source of creation and that you are in service, always in service, but not only in service, you too are supposed to enjoy this experience. So it's service and enjoyment and the enjoyment is loving life. <laughs> loving life you know so once again divine mother says your purpose my purpose everyone's purpose even the pleiadians the arcturians the syrians is actually love and service and that is our design the design is very simple i mentioned it yesterday i'll mention it again because that is the this, this design of all beings and cosmos it is that you receive the fullness of source light and love, and then you emanate it out. That is love and service. It is only in love that we open up, and it is in the emanation that we are of service. It's pretty incredible. So <laughs> let us go into this amazing meditation. So once again, we'll be hopping across the Big Dipper. How fun is that? <laughs> So go barefoot when you hop on the Big Dipper. Again, every day is the opportunity to use your gifts. Your gift, number one, is your heart. It's your portal. You are the stargate, really. And this is the thing that once you open up the stargate within yourself, you know, the fullness of source will flow into you and then more and more and more. It only gets better. <laughs> once you open up to it you know first it's the struggle of the human self but once we open up it's like all right how much bliss can i take <laughs> so let us take a lot of bliss in so yeah i like it let's go barefoot <laughs> so uh again this is from the album we'll be working with this every day the times on the website on the event page uh i'll be traveling next week quite a bit so sometimes you know we'll have just one meditation but i'll be recording the meditations themselves are not recorded so that everybody's encouraged to work with the album as well and so let us go big dipper here we come divine will we open up to you surrender surrender Oh, I want to say one thing. So this is going to be the first journey. We'll just take them from one to, I think it's 12. Transforming your life with divine will. Here it is. So let me see. So we have 12 journeys. So it's going to be 12 days. And so we start with connecting with divine will, just really getting acquainted with the light that is shining upon us. Now, I know we talked about this before, but I want to say, it is never divine will for anyone to suffer or experience pain. That is just the result of what happened on planet Earth and really in also the larger world. And that is the presence of unconsciousness. And then unconsciousness became the propeller. And so we came up with all these stories of saying, you know, it's useful to suffer. It's a great lesson, maybe. But actually, the original design was that mm -hmm, uh, the original design was that we will grow through love. 
and evolve through joy. How wonderful is that? So let us restore. We grow through love and evolve through joy. And so this is the first journey. Is it? It's contacting divine will. So I think the mystics that we are, I'm very excited about this work. I never knew this was going to come because again, you know, it's always um, divine mother's decision. What is next for humanity? This is a mission, big mission, right? Not only for yourself, but also you understand that this is what we are doing here for humanity, for mother earth and bringing these energies, anchoring them into this world so selflessly. That is the key for all. Yes, absolutely. Ah, this is very exciting. I'm so excited because, you know, we contact these layers of creation and we just embody them more and more and more. So when I met source, <laughs> again, I always say it's a funny way to say it, but we all come from that source. So when you meet your source again, you know, it's just remembering where you came from. I realized that only the great ones can really reside right next to source. And that is because they too became source of so much light. And so source can directly transmit to them. And then they transmit to a group. And then the group transmits to others and so on and so on. So this is how it works. The greater you become, the higher you can go to be the closest to source. And then you too become the tree of life the big tree of life. When we become the big tree of life, then we have others living within our tree and we too become the great one. And it's not like, you know, I'm so great now I teach others. No, no, no. It is that you nurture others to become as great as you and greater. The idea within creation is that every great being who then is in charge of many, wants the many to become greater than itself. Imagine the selflessness. Without having anyone being dependent, everyone is free to take as much as they can and then become so great and greater. And so, you know, I saw the cosmic tree of life and realized that we are part of that great one. We all are part of that great one. So once again, this I highly recommend, of course, getting this album for yourself so that you can work with it and work with it until the job is done. You always will know when your job is done with a certain level of work and you will be moving forward. But very often we also go back and it's different, even though it's the same thing. So thank you for supporting the work of Orin and Daben by getting this album. This is the only way we can do it. <laughs> so <clears throat> we will be working with the seven stars of the Big Dipper, the seven qualities. It will be the quality, the will to initiate the awakening of new consciousness. We will be working with the will to unify and develop our vision. We will work with the will to evolve, to become wise. It's all about wise and love, wise love. We will be working with the will to harmonize and deepen our intuition so that we can always be living our highest purpose in service and love. We will be working with the will to act, to achieve true liberation. We will be working with the will to cause. We will embody the highest ideals of cosmos into this embodiment. We will be working with the will to express. We will be creating divinity in form. We will learn how to create ideal relationships, manifest with divine will, and transmit divine will. That is all very beautiful. When we come into alignment with the divine will, every area of our life becomes synchronized with the divine will and there is only good and beautiful. The blessings become so big, it is hard to believe. <laughs> so I can say we can go from deep unconsciousness into the highest consciousness. And then of course, it just goes on and on and on. It never ends. So 
It is the beauty of existing within creation. The relationships become so beautiful. It is hard to imagine how beautiful the relationships become. Nothing that we experience as a human being, you know, <laughs> as when we were in our human self, when we step into our divine self, we too are merged with another divine self. And then everything's perfect. There's no work. You know, I always say, if you're still working on relationships, when people ask me, you know, so much work. And I think, well, if it's so much work, then that is not yet the divine relationship. And so we step into our divinity and then everything is added onto us. It was one of those quotes again from Uncle Jesus that when we really embody the divine, everything is added onto us. We no longer need to even ask. It just is given. You know, it's like you open up all your channels and then all the goodness can come. No more blockages, no more limitations. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> so very beautiful. I did not get Magda yet, my love, if that I saw the question, not yet. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. So it's also been really wonderful uh, doing the one-on-one -on -one calls and being able to meet you individually and being able to really see the big stars that we have here with us, all of you, and all the beautiful work that you do. It's such an honor to be working with you on this big project here. So just a few words about Ascension process that we are in. We will continue, of course, today at 5 p.m. Pacific, we'll repeat. So the goal right now that we have is to really align with these big energies coming to us. <laughs> and these big energies are coming to us from many sources. So people are perceiving it as light codes. They see, okay. They see uh, these amazing light codes coming in. And these light codes are changing planet Earth. They're changing the electromagnetic field. So you see big changes are about to happen on planet Earth. I personally don't believe that this is going to be dramatic like some people see it. I do believe that as these light codes come through us, we simply upgrade the nervous system to only perceive perfect divine reality. So, you know, when we had the big flood last time, that was pretty dramatic and it was pretty traumatizing. When we had the flood before then, it was pretty dramatic and traumatizing. So this time we don't wanna be doing dramatic and <laughs> traumatizing in any way. So, <laughs> Beautiful. That's why we're here. You know, that's why we're here. Remember the promise we made at the end of Atlantis. We say Mother Earth will never suffer again. This time she will go into her bliss. And so that is what we are doing. So the electromagnetic field of the Earth is changing. So as we work with Polaris, as we work with the solar light, as we work with Venus, we are aligning our electromagnetic field also to be the best it can be. Mm -hmm. the nervous system blood within us is changing <laughs> and that's the work we do you know when you bring this light inside your blood it's pretty alchemical this is the alchemy within us so once again as we close let us bring in the light of polaris this beautiful north true north that we have within our head let us bring the golden light the body's changing incredibly golden light into the chest let us radiate that golden light and let us bring the white light of Venus into our abdomen. Let us just cover all those beautiful areas so that we can be transformed into the divine human. So, 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 no fear, no fear. Stepping into our Christ self, the Christ self sees everything as the movie on the outside. It is not real, but it is happening and it is the result of the past. The movie cannot scare us. We have the truth within us. And the truth is we are all love. And that's it. So thank you so much. We'll continue tomorrow, same times, same place. And we will continue our journey with these amazing, amazing qualities of the light. So we are magicians. Thank you. Thank you so much. Many blessings. <laughs>